If you are visiting Sicily for the first time, we are sure you will not make the mistake of losing out on its capital, Palermo. If we are completely honest here, Palermo does not really fall on the tourist map of Italy. Although we do not have a clue about the exact reason it is so, it could be because of the very diverse and rough history this city has seen. For instance, if you were a visitor to Palermo, say in the early 1990s, you would have been concerned about not being killed by the mafia or figure out a way to go through filthy streets. But things have changed drastically over the last century, and today, the city deserves a place on the tourist map. We would be lying if we said that Palermo does not have the most culturally diverse history of the European continent. Mind you, that is a large continent. Over the last 2,000 years, the city has been inhabited by many groups, the Normans, Arabs, Byzantines, and the Spanish, before it became an Italian region. As you can already imagine, all these groups had different traditions and ways of living and left a mark on this city. And since it does not come up on the tourist maps as often as it should, it means that you can see so much without being bothered by a loud crowd and spend your time uncovering secret trails. And how exciting would doing all that be in just 48 hours? That's right. Welcome back to Town Travel Tips. We are here today with a unique itinerary that will tell you what to do in Palermo and what delicious treats you should be munching on all in just 48 hours. But before we do that, make sure to subscribe to our channel, and if you love the video, do not forget to hit that like button as well. You can visit this adventurous place at any time of the year, but try not to book tickets around the autumn season. You might spend most of the time sitting in your room waiting for the rain to stop. That does not sound appealing, especially for such a short trip, does it? And speaking of rooms, it is pretty easy to get lodging in this city. Since you will be going around the place in a significantly short time, the best thing to do would be to look for hotels or Airbnb in and around the city center or the theater area. To spice things up and not get locked in the crowded streets, you can hire an e-scooter to get around. If you are scared of falling down and spraining your ankle from one, don't worry, you can also get a cab to go around as well. Do you remember us saying that there have been diverse groups thronging Palermo for ages? As a result of those influences, the architecture in this city is a unique and beautiful mix of Arab, Italian, and Nordic influences. Some of these monuments were even granted UNESCO World Heritage status back in 2015. The famous Palermo Cathedral would be the place to start your first day. If you are baffled by the exterior, wait till you get inside and see the decorations. Make a mental note to visit the majestic church and the crypts where Frederico II and other Nordic kings from the 13th century have been put to rest. But the best part about this place is the roof. You can buy tickets that cost 5 euros beforehand and believe us when we say that getting to the roof is worth every penny, as it gives you a wonderful view of the city you will be exploring for the next few hours. If you have not got a growling stomach and can spare some time after this, why not go ahead and look around the most ancient royal palace in the world? The Palazzo di Normani is where all the Sicilian rulers used to govern from, and today it is the place for the Sicilian Regional Assembly. As they say, the traditions go on. We are sure you will be burnt out by this time, so it is time to get your hands on some Sicilian cuisine. You can head to a typical Sicilian mercato, which is what they call their open-air markets. Such markets will have places selling super fresh products and plenty of restaurants inside. Some of the most well-known names that come up are Mercato del Capo and the Vicuria. The first has a more authentic vibe, while the second has lost a bit of its charm over the years and now a mix of local restaurants. Some of the dishes you can sample are arancina, or what you may know as fried rice, the caponata, which are eggplants, the panel, which use chickpea flour fried with fennel, the cassata, and canolo siciliano. We are sure that you have heard of cannoli in the classic 1972 movie The Godfather. What makes things even better is that you get to choose the filling flavor, the fried pastry flavor, and the toppings. So here is us just giving you a heads up not to miss out on this classic dessert. Spend a lazy, well-fed afternoon at Palermo's Botanical Garden, one of the most extensive gardens in Europe. The colossal banyan trees will provide some calming shade under which you can lie down and gaze around. To end the day on a good note, you need a great dinner, and what is better than more Sicilian food? Reserve a table in advance and head to Osteria Ballaro. Try out their range of Italian pasta, the rare pastry-filled Sicilian desserts, and much more. That will give you all the good night's sleep you need for day one. They say breakfast is an excellent start to a day, and trust us, you have a long day ahead of you, so why not go for some unforgettable breakfast? Have you heard of granita? It is like a fancy Sicilian slushy, much like but very different from the morning coffee varieties that we have. 
So for example, if you get a coffee-flavored granita, it will taste a bit like a regular frappe. Still, then again, it is an entirely different drink. Get a brioche bun to go along with it. Can you imagine this deliciousness is something the people here regularly start their day with? No wonder Sicilians are so cheerful. We would be too. For day two, you can either hop on a bus or get a private car because you will be headed south of Palermo to a place called Montreal. There are several hop-on, hop-off tours that include Montreal in their visits, but these are a cheap way to tour the city quickly. Visit the Montreal Cathedral, which is a mix of Arab and Norman architecture and which is also a UNESCO heritage site. Roam around the rural countryside and it will show you a whole different face of Palermo. After coming back to Palermo, it is now time for your lunch. The city has some of the best street food, so why don't you try that out? If you are looking for options, try out authentic fried Sicilian delicacies like a cuopo, which is named after the cone of paper where the fried food is put. For your last evening, explore the city center and spend some time near Quattro Canti, which is Palermo's iconic city square. We are sure you have crossed this place multiple times over the last day, so you must have noticed the joyous atmosphere and busy alleys all around the area. Have a glass of wine at Enoteca Wine Bar, which is there in the very center. Try to sample some Sicilian drinks like the Cinotto, which tastes a bit like Coke but is made from Sicilian citrus fruit. If you do not want more fried stuff, you can head to the Seven Restaurant, a fancy rooftop restaurant with a view over the whole city and refined food and cocktails. Or you can go to the Osteria de Vespri, which serves fantastic local food. And since you will be leaving this vibrant place tomorrow, why not indulge in another Canolo Siciliano? With that rich ricotta feeling and the flavors you can choose, it will be the perfect way to remember and say goodbye to a place with great history and traditions. All that being said, Palermo does have so many other things to do. You have terrific islands dotted around that you can take a ferry to. Mondello Beach, Cefalu, and other places will get you an entire day to enjoy to its fullest. But then, you will be coming back for all that again, won't you? Or wasn't this vacation not as unforgettable as you thought it would be? Let us know what you think in the comments section below because we love hearing from you. We will be back very soon. Take care. Ciao.